Medaka, also called Japanese rice fish, are a great aquarium fish. They don't need a heater. They're subtropical. They can withstand warm summers and light winters. They aren't fussy. They'll eat all kinds of fresh, frozen, and prepared foods. They'll do well at a wide pH and hardness range. They're available in a variety of color morphs. Madaka are also a research animal used in scientific and medical studies of genetics, genomics, cancer, toxicology, development, and other fields. They're fairly new to the east coast of the U.S. I've been keeping them for about a year. In this video, I'll share with you what I've learned about Japanese rice fish, both from other hobbyists and from scientific publications. I'm Bob, and this is Sunny's Fish Room. According to Google and Oxford Languages, Madaka comes from the Japanese words me, or I, and daka, meaning high. Maybe the name comes from Madaka swimming at the surface, high in the water column, or because the eye appears on the upper part of the fish's head. The English language name, rice fish, comes from the flooded fields where these fish are often found. The Madaka, Orizius latipes, is originally from Japan. The rice fish's genus name, Orizius, comes from the genus name of rice, Orizus. The species name, latipes, means wide foot. Fish don't have feet, so I'm guessing that maybe the researchers who named it thought that it had a wide footprint or a wide distribution. Another species, Orizius sakaizumii, is found in northern Japan. It's possible that some of the fish in the hobby are hybrids between the two species. According to The Untapped Potential of Madaka and Its Wild Relatives by Leon Hilgers and Julia Scharzer, rice fish are in the family Adrianichthyidae which includes a lot of species found throughout East Asia. Rice fish have been bred in Japan since the 17th century. In an article in Aquarium Hobbyist magazine, Bryson Zhang said Madaka can survive from 32 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, zero to about 38 C, but that it's better to avoid these high and low temperature extremes. Most of the breeders I've spoken with keep them at indoor temperatures in the low to high 70s Fahrenheit about 21 to 26 C. They're also kept in outdoor tubs and ponds in the summer months in Japan as well as in the United States. So they probably won't have any problems in the low to mid 80s. In the winter months, they'll survive if their water doesn't freeze solid. They enter dormancy below 50 degrees, slowing down and eating only small amounts. Zhang said he allows about a gallon of water for each fish, which seems like a good rule of thumb to me, considering that they can grow to an inch and a half long. In the wild, Madaka eat insect larvae and small invertebrates. In the aquarium, they eat all kinds of prepared flakes and pellets for carnivorous species. They will also do well on newly hatched brine shrimp and daphne. Bryson Zheng said Madaka will do well in a wide range of water conditions. I did a search of free scientific references on the web to find out if anyone has done any studies on their ideal water parameters. I didn't find any consensus. In the 1991 reference, Guidelines for Culturing the Japanese Madaka, Jeffrey S. Denny and colleagues bred them in water from Lake Superior. The temperature ranged from 25 to 28 degrees C, 77 to about 82 F, a higher pH range, 7.4 to 8.2, and relatively soft water with a carbonate hardness of 42 milligrams per liter and a total hardness of 45 milligrams per liter. In the undated reference, a manual for breeding of Madaka in large scale using aquatic habitats system. Katsutoshi Niwa said his lab bred them in a small amount of natural seawater dissolved in reverse osmosis water. I know that's not very specific. In the National Bioresource Project, Madaka, an integrated bioresource for biological and biomedical sciences, a 2010 reference from Japan, researchers recommend keeping them at a temperature range of 25 to 28 degrees C, a pH range of 6.8 to 7.5, and a carbonate hardness of 20 to 100 milligrams per milliliter. That's carbonate hardness ranging from soft to moderately hard. The way to tell males from females is that female madaka are larger and rounder around the middle than male madaka. There's also a difference in their anal fins. 
In the male, the anal fin is longer in the front and narrows toward the back. In the female, the edge of the anal fin parallels the body. Spawning is usually in the morning. After spawning, the female vodaka lays her eggs. They're held together in a clump by sticky filaments next to the ventral fins. Over the next several hours, the female will swim through clumps of plants, trying to knock the eggs off and attach them to leaves and stems. Rice fish breeding is light dependent. They start spawning in the spring as the days get longer and warmer. They stop breeding in the fall as the days get shorter and the temperature drops. In the 2016 scientific article, Madaka as a model animal and current status of Madaka biological resources, researchers at the Japanese National Institute for Basic Biology wrote that Madaka need about 13 and a half hours of light per day to be ready for breeding. In a 1999 study, researchers at the University of California, Davis, found that in 16 hours of light, in 8 hours of darkness at 25 degrees C, 77 degrees F, females produce 10 to 25 fertile eggs each day. The fish stopped spawning when the researchers reversed the conditions to 8 hours of light and 16 hours of darkness. Dropping the temperature during 16 hours of light reduced spawning but didn't stop it. When the researchers dropped the temperature from 25C to 15C, 77 to 59F, the fish stopped spawning for a few days, spawned at normal levels for a few days, and then produced only a few eggs each day. Some breeders will keep pairs in a tank with yarn mops or floating mops made with strips of pot scrubbing pad lodged into a pool noodle. If you're quick enough, you can net the female before she gets rid of the eggs and pick them off by hand or with forceps. Other breeders keep pairs in a tank with java moss or other plants and then either remove the adults after spawning or transfer the plants into another tank and let the young hatch out. I like to start the fry on vinegar eels for the first two or three days. After that, I give them finely ground food like golden pearls. Like just about all baby fish, the young will do well on newly hatched brine shrimp. I've had trouble getting a rice fish colony started. My fish would do well for a time and then slowly get sick and die one by one. After a while, the fish would stop pooping and instead start secreting long, transparent strands. I did some research on the internet and I think the fish were infected with worms or some other intestinal parasites. I don't know how common this illness is but I bought the fish from a dealer and also from members of my aquarium club, and both groups of fish had this illness. The anti-parasitic drug levamisole seemed to help. A friend told me to vacuum the tank the morning after treatment to remove parasites that had passed through the fish's intestines. This seemed to help, but it didn't get rid of the infection completely. I bought some more fish from Blake at Blue Ridge Breeders, and she said she had the problem too, and got rid of it by collecting the eggs, hatching them in clean tanks, and isolating the baby fish from the original breeders. For more information on keeping and breeding aquarium fish, please subscribe to my channel. And if you liked this video, here's another one you might like. Thanks very much for watching.